Hello students, welcome to your second PUC biology practical session. In today's session, we will be studying about some of the xeric and hydric adaptation in case of plants and animals. So, what is a xeric adaptation? Xeric adaptation means where the organism adapt themselves and live in such an environmental condition where the water availability is less. Hydric adaptation means the organisms survive in such a condition where the water availability is more. Adrartha, xeric conditionally nirna abhava irutte, nirna amsha kammi irutte. So, a kammi nirna amsha dalli avgalu yavatharada adaptation sanna hondu kondu a environmentally successful lagi baduktave. Anthaddanna xeric kanta karitivi. Hydric kanta heladre, yelli athwa yava regionally nirna amsha jaasthi iddu antha nirna amsha dalli organisms galu iddu hege survive aaktave with what type of adaptations. So, we will be studying about xeric and hydric adaptation in case of both plants as well as in case of animals. We will start this session with xeric adaptation in case of plants. So, in this screen you can see the first plant that is Opuntia, common agi idana cactus antha karitivi. So, in this Opuntia what you can see is the spines. These are not thorns but these are spines. Here in this xeric condition where the water availability is very less, the cactus modify their leaves into pointed structures called spines. Either a leaf and a spines are convert madiradrinda, they can reduce the loss of water that is what we call transpiration. That is the adaptation in case of cactus. So, these have modified their leaves into spines to reduce the transpiration. Next organism or plant what you can see on the screen is acacia. So, in case of acacia you can see a bulged structure which is present just near the stem. Here this petiole is modified into leaf like structure called phyllode. Andre stem matra irvantha petiole will be modified into a structure. This modified structure is called a phyllode. Petiole gets modified into phyllode and this carries the function of photosynthesis in case of acacia. So, in acacia the xeric adaptation here is the petiole is modified into phyllode so that they can carry the photosynthesis process. And the last plant will be bryophyllum. You can see this bryophyllum has thick succulent leaves which help in storing the water to overcome the reduction of water in the environment. So, bryophyllum have succulent leaves which store the water for their required physiological processes. These are the different types of xeric adaptation which can be seen in Opuntia where leaves are modified into spines to reduce transpiration. In Acacia they have petiole modified into phyllode which undergoes the photosynthesis process. In Bryophyllum these have succulent leaves which help in storing the water. Next is about the hydric plants. Some of the examples will be the first hydric plant what you can see here is Nelumbo. When it comes to this lotus plant you can see that it has leaves which are floating. So, they have floating leaves with the very long thin or slender petiole. This floating function is carried out by the presence of some of the aerenchyma tissues which store air within. So, that is how they overcome the hydric condition. Example is Nelumbo. Next one is Hydrilla. So, you can see in this diagram Hydrillas are having small finely dissected leaves. The leaves are very small and finely dissected because these plants are completely submerged in water. So, they can overcome intake of excess water by having smaller finely dissected 
leaves. Next example is Icornia. You can see this on the screen. So Icornia, if you concentrate on the roots, you can see some V-shaped structure at the tip of the roots. These are nothing but called air pockets. These air pockets help in buoyancy in case of Icornia because of the erenchyma tissues which are present. Buoyancy in theradhar nearly teluvanthadhu. So only their roots will be present within the water. They are freely floating plants unlike Nelumbo. Nelumbo dali roots are submerged in water only the flower and leaves will be floating on the tip of the water. So here in case of Iconia they have air pockets or root pockets which are with erenchyma tissues or erenchyma cells which help in respiration as well as in case of buoyancy helps in floating. So these are the three different examples for hydric plants. First one is Nelumbo commonly called lotus. This Nelumbo have a thin long slender petiole with floating leaves which help in buoyancy which floats with the help of erenchyma tissues. Next was the hydrilla which is a submerged plant because of which they have finely dissected leaves present in them. Iconia, these are freely floating plants where the roots are present within the water and rest of the part of the body floats over the water. So these have roots containing root pockets as well as the upper part or the petiole is filled with the erenchyma tissue which helps in buoyancy as well as in respiration process. So next we have to study about some of the animal adaptations regarding xeric as well as hydric. So the first example here will be camel. So camel is a type of xeric adaptation. So in xeric region they have certain adaptations to, to overcome the increased temperature will be they have a hygroscopic skin that is they have rough skin all over their body and the hump what you can see it stores the metabolic fat. Next is they release concentrated urine. Next is they have long eyelashes and nose holes are pin holes in them. These are the xeric adaptations in case of camel. Next one will be the squirrel. So in case of squirrel their food or their basic food will be juice that means they consume large number of fruit which is rich in water content. Next adaptation they have a protective mimicry so they can protect themselves from any of the predators and limbs add to the speed of their locomotion. Next xeric organism will be a rat. So rat these are also just like squirrel they prefer more juices in their food that means they require carbohydrate rich food which is rich in water content. They also have a protective mimicry and these rats are normally nocturnal in nature Ratri Sanchari nocturnal in nature as well as these have limbs which add to the speed of their locomotion. So these are the different types of xeric adaptation which can be identified in case of animals. Next one will be adaptations that is hydric adaptation in case of animals. The first example will be prawn. So if you see this prawn they have outer protective covering that is scaled protective layers are present in them. If you see the anterior region they have a long protruding structure called rostrum and in the posterior region they have a telson. So these both help in protection telson in the posterior side and anterior side it will be the rostrum. Locomotion in case of prawns there will be 19 appendages in case of prawn and locomotion takes place by pleopods as well as walking legs. Walking legs present in the cephalothorax region. Pleopods are called swimming legs. These are present in the next part that is the abdomen part of the prawn. Both help in walking as well as swimming. Next one they balance their body with the help of a last part which has wing like structure called uropod. The balancing takes place by the last part of the body that is called a uropod. 
Next one is the freshwater fish. In case of fish, they have a protective layer called scales which protect their body which is present throughout their body. Locomotion is with the help of pectoral fin, dorsal fin, pelvic fin as well as the caudal fin. Anal fin is also present. All these help in locomotion or in swimming within the water. Near the anterior region, they have a flap like structure which is called operculum which helps in respiration in case of fishes. Next is the frog. So in case of frog, you can see that these have mucus rich body that is mucus glands are present. This mucus is present throughout their body from the nose tip till the leg tip. They have this mucus spread throughout the body. They have a cutaneous skin. This cutaneous skin helps in maintaining the moisture as well as help in respiration during estivation probe. If you take the anatomy, here in case of frog, the adult frog respires through lungs whereas the tadpole that is the larval stage respires through the gills. Next when it comes to swimming, here the swimming takes place with the help of feet and you can see between the digits there is a thin skin like extension. These are called web which helps in pushing the water backwards when they are in hydric habitat. So that is all about hydric and xeric adaptations in case of animal. In case of xeric adaptation we did discuss about camel with their hygroscopic skin, their metabolic filled metabolic fat filled hump as well as long eyelashes and release of concentrated urine. Next in case of rat and squirrel they share the same characters or adaptation like preferring juices as food as well as they have a protective mimicry whereas in case of squirrels they have limbs for their uh, speeding up of locomotion as well as in rat these are nocturnal organisms. Next when it comes to hydric animals we did discuss about three different organisms that is a prawn, fish as well as a frog. In prawns we did discuss that they have protective scaled covering, they have rostrum anteriorly and telson posteriorly for protection, they have walking legs and swimming legs called pleopods, they balance their body with the help of uropods. In case of fishes body is completely filled with scales. They have fins, different kinds of fins based on their position like pectoral, pelvic, anal, dorsal and caudal fin for locomotion that is swimming. They have a flap like structure called operculum which helps in respiration. Last organism was frog which has cutaneous mucus filled skin. Their respiration is through lungs in a case of adult and in tadpole through gills. They also have Hydric adaptation that is they swim in water with the help of their legs. In between the digits they have thin skin extended which are called web and the limb is termed webbed feet. So this help in swimming them and pushing the water backwards so that the frog can move forward. So that is all in this practical session about xeric and hydric adaptation in different plants and animals. Thank you.